far we've removed the window and used a heat gun in order to remove the excess glazing on the window. We also used that same heat gun to remove the paint off of the window. Used a hardener to help with the wood and next we're adding window points. Our windows are about 36 inches tall, so we end up using three glazing points on the vertical and two on the horizontal. You ready? We're working on our windows again, and we are finally getting to uh, the glazing part. We're using this Crawford's Painter's Putty. Um, it's supposed to be, it's an oil-based uh, material and uh, a little bit uh, more like the old school stuff. Uh, there was a bunch of water on the top that you had to remove, and then you grab some of this um, and basically uh, work it in your hands to uh, get it kind of warm so it's a little bit more pliable. All right, so what I did was I took this and I make it into a little bit of a ribbon, a small little bowl of putty. I tug it about a quarter of an inch, roughly, doesn't have to be perfect. And then I just work it in with my fingers into the seam of the glass and the wood just to kind of get it in place. What my goal is is to touch to make sure that you don't see the glazing points and you try to get it so that you're on the other side of that piece of wood. It's about an 8 to 16 inch piece of wood there. Um, so that's what you want to try to hide but you don't want to see your glaze on the other side of the glass. So. No, oh, one other key thing, make sure you wear gloves. This stuff gets in your fingers, it does not come off very easily. So then what I'm doing is I just go by with the knife here at about a 45. Like I said, you just want just enough putty there and you're gonna scrape off some because you're gonna have too much. that you've created but here I've, I've created a little bit more of a raggedy edge so I'm just going back and just kind of tidying up the raggedy edge because you will see a little bit of that raggedy edge on the other side so if you can kind of get it as straight as possible I'm just creating an edge it's not see where I still got a little bit that's pulled up not that big a deal, just take it and you smooth it back down. It kind of gives you a guide, so if you hit the edge of the glaze point, you know you're at the at the spot where you need to be. And I also put in three glaze points on this side and that side, so it kind of gives you kind of a guide as well as in, in addition to holding the window in place. We took these windows apart. They only had one square, uh, diagonal, um, they called them diamond. Uh, glaze points are really old, um, they're hard to get in, um, and they don't hold the windows very well. They only had one here and one there, that was it. In my opinion, I think you need one top and at least three on the sides because the windows are so big. If the window's vibrating in the pressure of the house, that's what cracks and loosens up this stuff faster, so if you can kind of anchor that window a little bit. so. The stuff because this oil base does take time to get a skin developed it's not like the latex type stuff and with these older windows the wood is so dry having latex on it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stick so i use this we use this crawford putty um one of the things that i've learned over the years is if you just leave it uncovered or unprotected the air inside the can will make it very difficult and make it hard as a rock
One of the things, rather than putting water on, I've learned over the years is just take some saran wrap and just tuck it down into the corners, kind of keep the air to a minimum on the surface so you don't get that skin to develop inside the surface and then put your lid back on. That way the air... Maybe trying to glaze windows um, when it's minus 10 outside was probably not the most ideal situation. We ended up putting a towel over here um, to try to keep some of the wind down and I just tried to move it and it is literally frozen to the bottom of our uh, of our shade so um, wow 